Hey guys, it's Kaylee and welcome back to Be In A Suit where I talk about sustainability because I dream of a world where instead of complaining about gas prices, we all work together to get off fossil fuels. Oh! And we are back with another deep dive in my SDG series. For those of you who are new to the channel, these videos really go into a lot of detail on each of the 17 sustainable development goals and because of that they are pretty lengthy. However, at the end of the video, I do summarize the goal in like two minutes. So if you want a super high level overview, you can jump to that section by checking out the chapters in the description box below. And if you haven't already watched my primer on the SDGs, I do recommend checking that out first so that you understand the overall framework that each of these goals is a part of. I'm absolutely pumped because today we are zooming in on SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy, which happens to be my favorite SDG, as you can probably tell by my Enernerd t-shirt. As much as I love all the goals in the 2030 agenda, energy is where I started my career and it continues to hold a pretty special place in my heart. And SDG 7 is one of the goals where we've seen the most progress since the adoption of the SDGs. It also happens to be one of the shortest goals, having only three substantive targets and two means of implementation targets. This is because transforming our energy system, although totally complex in its scale and implementation, is actually quite basic and is made up of three major components, providing energy access, expanding renewable energy, and dramatically increasing energy efficiency. As always, my blog post is linked below and has links to all the research that I used in this video, resources where you can learn more, and a few organizations who work on this topic that you may choose to follow or support, including the organization I co-founded with two friends while I was in university called Student Energy. You can check them out. They really have an amazing energy systems map that goes into way more depth on these issues and is an incredible resource. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy. Energy is a lifeline of human society. In technical terms, it is the supply or the creation of work. And I mean work in a physics sense and not, you know, going to the office every day. The ability to do work more efficiently creates more capacity for humans and is crucial to our survival. It is also the underpinning of all our economic systems. Let me give you a few practical examples here to highlight what I mean. In terms of survival, the ability to heat ourselves or cool ourselves is fundamental to our existence, especially when you live in a really hot place, like for example, the Middle East, or a really cold place like, for example, the Arctic. We also need energy to cook food and purify water, which again are two things we cannot live without. But beyond survival, energy also extends our living hours. Imagine if you could only do things when the sun is up. Whether it be rudimentary, like being able to sit by a fire, or modern, like having electricity in our homes, energy allows us to have so many more hours in the day to do whatever it is that we choose to do. Energy also transfers work away from people. Think about this as an example. Traveling 100 kilometers is going to be a lot of work no matter how you do it. But imagine the amount of time and physical exertion it takes you to travel 100 kilometers by walking or even biking compared to if you take a train or a car. Energy allows us to do exponentially more with our limited internal supplies of human energy. You could look at this for computing as well. The energy that supplies computer processing allows us to do significantly more intellectually than we could have ever done with just our brains on their own. Energy is such an integral part of our lives that we often don't even recognize it's there, but it is a crucial system and one that also has big consequences. Whether it be fossil fuels creating CO2 emissions that are accelerating climate change, nuclear power creating waste that can never be destroyed, or large-scale hydro facilities causing floodplains that displace communities, there is no single source of energy that is without its positive and negative impacts and effects. Target 7.1. By 2030, ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. Now, there is no universally agreed upon definition of what energy access means, but for the purposes of this target, there are two main dimensions that are addressed. 
access to electricity, and access to clean fuels for cooking. On the electricity front, the definition of access is actually quite a low bar. It simply means having a usable electricity source that can provide basic lighting and charge a phone or power a radio for about four hours per day. It does not guarantee that someone will have enough electricity to maintain a high standard of living. The International Energy Agency, or the IEA, definition is slightly more elevated. It requires households to meet a minimum level of electricity. For rural households, that's 250 kilowatt hours per year, and for an urban household, that is 500 kilowatt hours per year. However, to put this in perspective, the average US household uses 11,000 kilowatt hours per year. And I checked my own consumption for 2021. I live in a one bedroom apartment in Switzerland, and my consumption was around 2,000 kilowatt hours per year. So you can see that that threshold for having energy access to electricity is quite low under both definitions. On the cooking side of energy access, the definition of clean cooking facilities is access to modern fuels and technologies. These include natural gas, liquefied petroleum gas, electricity and biogas, or improved biomass cookstoves that have considerably lower emissions and higher efficiencies than traditional fuel sources like wood, charcoal, tree leaves, crop residue, and animal dung. In addition, these cleaner burning fuels do not have particulate matter, which is extremely dangerous to human health. According to the World Health Organization, each year close to 4 million people die prematurely from illness attributed to household air pollution from inefficient cooking practices. So where do we stand on energy access, both for electricity and clean cooking overall? Despite significant progress over the past decade, the world is still falling short in providing affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. On the electricity front, we have seen pretty significant improvements. When I started working in this space over 10 years ago, I remember very vividly that the big number was 1 billion people who do not have access to electricity. That number dropped below the 1 billion mark in 2018 and now rests at approximately 759 million people or about 1 in 10 people who do not have access to electricity. I mean, there's still a long way to go, but this is pretty impressive progress. The share of the world's population with access to electricity grew from 83% in 2010 to 90% in 2019. The vast majority, or approximately three quarters of people who still do not have access to electricity, are located in Sub-Saharan Africa, 97 million in urban areas and 47.1 million in rural areas. At the current pace of improvement, 660 million people will still be without electricity in 2030. Progress on the clean cooking front has been on an upward trajectory, but at a very slow pace. More than 2.6 billion people still lack access to clean cooking facilities. This represents progress from 57% of the global population in 2010 to 66% of the population in 2019. Asia is home to almost 65% of the global population without access to clean cooking. The IEA estimates that 2.36 billion people will still lack access to clean cooking in 2030 given current progress and planned policies. They also estimate that it will take $43 billion of annual investment to reach universal energy access by 2030. Target 7.2, by 2030 increase substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. The share of renewable energy in the global energy mix is calculated by taking the amount of renewable energy, including solar, wind, geothermal, hydropower, bioenergy, and marine sources, and comparing it to all final energy consumption. This final consumption includes electricity, transportation, cooking, and heating or cooling. I did want to note here that traditional biomass, which includes burning of wood or organic material, is not included as renewable, but modern biomass technologies like biofuels, biogas produced through anaerobic digestion, wood pellet heating systems, and other technologies are included. Nuclear is also not considered renewable energy. Another caveat to make here is that this indicator focuses on the amount of renewable energy actually consumed rather than the capacity for renewable energy production, which cannot always be fully utilized. 
The growth of renewables has outpaced the rate of increased energy consumption. This has allowed for an overall increase in the total share of renewable energy in the global energy mix, which accounted for about 11% in 2018. Of course, you can tell by this relatively small number that the global energy system is still dominated heavily by fossil fuels, which account for more than 80% of global energy consumption. Now, if we swing and look only at electricity, the growth is much more impressive. For example, between 2017 and 2018, renewable electricity use grew 7%, moving the share of renewables in global electricity consumption from 24.7% to 25.4%, which is significantly higher than the 11% of overall energy. Hydropower remains by far the largest source of renewable electricity globally, followed by wind and solar PV. Together, wind and solar PV have been showing the fastest growth rates among renewable electricity sources and are responsible for more than half of the increase in renewable electricity consumption observed over the past 10 years. The IEA predicts that the share of modern renewables in total final energy consumption, so not just electricity but all consumption, will grow to over 15% by 2030 given current and planned policies. It is believed that renewable electricity will overtake coal as the single largest share in 2026 to supply around 37% of the world's electricity by 2030. And now while that is promising, the use of renewables for transportation is still very small at only 3.4%, which is mostly biofuels. But of course, we do expect to see this continue to grow with further adoption of electric vehicles. Target 7.3 by 2030, double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency. One source of energy that we often discount or forget is using all the energy we actually produce and not letting it go to waste. This is where energy efficiency comes in. Energy efficiency simply means using less energy to perform the same task, and within this target, it is measured by what we call energy intensity. Energy intensity is the ratio of total energy supply versus annual gross domestic product or GDP. In essence, it is the amount of energy we use per unit of wealth created. According to the International Renewable Energy Agency, or IRENA, using this measure of energy intensity to understand efficiency allows us to observe how energy use rises or falls while also looking at the social and economic development factors that may affect those rates. Energy intensity declines as energy efficiency improves. In other words, if we're using less energy to do more useful things in society and our economy, we are being more efficient. Makes sense. We can increase energy intensity through a number of means, including mandatory policies such as codes and standards, including minimum energy performance standards, fuel economy standards, building energy codes, and industry targets. These measures are being increasingly complemented by fiscal and financial incentives as well. These include tax relief on building renovations and electric vehicle purchases, for example. Energy intensity fell from 5.6 megajoules per US dollar in 2010 to 4.8 megajoules per US dollar in 2018. Just a reminder, when energy intensity falls, energy efficiency is increasing. The most recent calculations show a low rate of improvement at only about 0.8 to 1.1% annually, far less than the estimated 2.6% annually originally needed to meet the target by 2030. With this slowing progress, we now require a 3% improvement every year from now to 2030 to meet the target. SDG 7 also features two means of implementation targets, which cover financial flows to developing countries for clean energy development, global cooperation and technology exchange, and research and development. Let's quickly look at those. Target 7A. By 2030, enhance international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and advanced and cleaner fossil fuel technology, and promote investment in energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. International financial flows to developing countries in support of clean and renewable energy reached $14 billion in 2018. Unfortunately, these financing flows have been very uneven. 
five countries, India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Argentina, and Turkey, accounted for 30% of total commitments. Contrast this with 46 least developed countries who together received only 20% of total commitments. While it's good to see the financial flows going, we really need to even these out. Target 7B. By 2030, expand infrastructure and upgrade technology for supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in developing countries, in particular, least developed countries, small island developing states, and landlocked developing countries in accordance with their respective programs of support. One really cool thing that we saw just a few years ago was that for the first time in 2018, a majority of new renewable energy capacity was installed in developing countries. Although the majority of the new capacity installations were in developing countries, it still was the case that in developed countries, there was four times more capacity per capita. So we still have a lot of work to increase infrastructure and installations in those countries. Okay, so that is SDG 7 on affordable and clean energy. I hope you are as enthusiastic as me about energy after hearing all that. Now let's quickly summarize and close this one out. SDG 7 is dedicated to ensuring affordable clean energy for all. Target 7.1 aims to ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services, which includes both electricity and clean cooking fuel. Currently, 759 million people, or about 1 in 10, do not have access to electricity, and 2.6 billion still lack access to clean cooking facilities. While these are improvements, we still have a long way to go, and it is estimated that it will take $43 billion of annual investment to reach universal energy access by 2030. Target 7.2 looks to increase the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. Renewable energy includes solar, wind, geothermal, hydropower, bioenergy, and marine sources. It currently makes up 11% of the total energy mix and 25% of total global electricity consumption. Use of renewables for transportation still remains low at only 3.4%. Target 7.3 is focused on doubling energy efficiency. This is measured by energy intensity, which is energy use versus GDP. Energy intensity fell from 5.6 megajoules per US dollar in 2010 to 4.8 megajoules per US dollar in 2018. We are still, though, well below the required 3% improvement every year from now to 2030 to meet the target. SDG 7 also features two means of implementation targets, which cover financial flows to developing economies for clean energy development, global cooperation, technology exchange, and infrastructure research and development. And that's SDG 7. And that's it. That's all I have for you today. If you learned something in this video, give it a like. I'll be back very soon with SDG 8 on decent work and economic growth. As always, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to check out the blog post if you want more information or to continue learning about this topic. See you in the next one. And until then, keep fighting the good fight, Enter Nerds. Bye.